welcome to the Company of Women International presenting to you today the Beauty from Ashes TV show. We have lots of surprises for you today. I have Joel, Joel. <laughs> you know I have been trying to call him Joel now for months. And so we're not gonna settle there. It's Rifle Scudder. And I want him to introduce his two friends that he has brought. And we have got an interesting story to hear from these young men. So, Rifle. Take it away, right. Yeah. On my left here we have Artin. Uh, we just call him, if people can't remember the name, he just says it's okay to call if him Bertha Tim. If can't remember his name. Yeah, so Artin <laughs> over here. And this side we have Jay, Jay Coltrane. He's Artem will have to pronounce his own surname because I can't. So oh, okay. It? It's Artem Abramov. Abramov. Abramov, yeah. All right. So, and your sure. last name? It's Coltrane. Coltrane. Mm -hmm. Just like it spells? Mm hmm. See you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I told him, I said he, he could be my son, only my son has gray hair and uh, his last name is Bob. And Jay is not that at all. <laughs> It's been such a pleasure to meet these young men. They have attended a Bible study with us and uh, Rifle has brought him, brought them each time. And I heard you telling Rifle that your mother had come with you to the Bible study once. Yes. I was not aware of this, so tell us something about this. Um, the Bible study or when we came? Uh, you, you and your mother and her coming to the Kononia and Oh yes, Her impression. Um, a few weeks ago we came, I had visited a time before, uh, Brother Rifle brought me and uh, so I, I told her about it and she was very excited about, you know, people just gathering and worshiping the Lord yeah. and the kind of things we do mm -hmm. and she loved it. We came and it was just an amazing time of worship and fellowship. So Great. Did you get another direct word from the Lord as you did the first time? Uh, no ma'am, not that time. I'm still, I'm still chewing on first time the first word let me tell you the spirit of the lord released through one of the members there gave him a more fantastic encouraging word and you just have to return every time to hear more of it so have you heard anything lately or are they keeping it a secret from you <laughs> no, my first time that i went you know to the to the house and to the meeting you know, I, I received the word of prophecy over me. Okay. You know, and I'm still, I'm, a, I'm still eating minds. I'm still yeah. chewing it, and you know, letting it avail, and just trying to be obedient to thus saith the Lord. I've always remembered from the time that, <clears throat> excuse me, from the time that I was told that you reach for your destiny by using the prophetic word that you get from the Lord. The mm -hmm. Prophetic word is when the Lord is is speaking to you of your future and so it's a rhema word it's a now word and so whenever the lord does give you a word like that always keep that foremost in your mind so that you can constantly speak it and call your life to come in line with that word it just has a lot of power doesn't it yeah definitely well both of them the very first time they went to the group received a word you know prophecy over them that that is really really powerful it was so, yeah. i happened to have been there that night i'm yeah. delighted <laughs> so it's amazing the first time they went there you know the lord definitely spoke clearly about the future that he has for these two young men and that mm -hmm. he has great plans for them just jeremiah 29 11 just all over them i want you please rifle now to tell me how you got acquainted with them and how how you you all got here sure as we did the previous program the previous recording we were speaking about different things that our church harvest renewal does and one of the things is our prison ministry which is called rhema interventions mm -hmm. so the lord has opened doors for me to be able to go into the prisons and preach the word it's mm -hmm. a, what i do is i teach in a faith-based program Mm -hmm. So the people who come to the class, now they he said, know. Preaching a faith-based. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So the people who come to the class, they are told beforehand, you know, uh -huh. we will preach from the Bible. There's no not naming the name of Jesus or, you know, right. it's all faith-based from yes. the Bible. Well, the reason I repeated after you is because Kim Clement, and I know you've heard of him, mm. He's from South Africa and yeah. has an accent too. 
And he was saying fall the other day, and he was he was meaning that I forgot what he meant. At any rate, he was asked, did he mean fall or did he mean four? four okay. Well, he meant fall, but we don't understand. Okay, yeah. Like we thought it said four. No, we say autumn. So in South you Africa. say autumn. We say autumn, yeah, not fall. So, so when you said faith-based, reminded mm. me of that. It's like, okay, was that faith or what was it? Yeah. No, it's a faith-based <laughs> class. So basically, the people who come to this class, they know that the teachings are going to come from the Bible. It's about Jesus Christ, that He is Lord, that He is Savior. He's the only name by, me, by who men can be saved. So they can't apply for the class and then come to the class and say, well, you're not allowed to speak. You know, you offended me. I didn't want to hear anything about that. So that's what is so amazing about the classes, that the guys who come to the class, they're Christians. They want to know more about Jesus. They want to know more about amazing. the Word. So that's the class that I teach. God just opened that door. And uh, Jay was in, in one of the classes that I teach there, so that's how I met him. Good. And uh, when he came out, the Lord had directed us as a church just to try and do something more than just go in and visit. Because mm -hmm. the Word said, Jesus says, you know, you never came to visit me. So visiting is good. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you just go in and visit, when you leave, you've left them really with nothing but a warm feeling of someone came to see me. Right. But if you go and visit and bring the word, now when you leave, you've left them with something. That they can chew on, study, yes. meditate on, right. and grow. So it's not just going in and visiting, and that is good, and we need more people to do that, to go in and just talk to the guys or the ladies or the young boys mm -hmm. and just say, hey, I'm here to just be a friend and talk with you and have a conversation. I care about your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, But as I say, just to go and visit and do, do nothing more than that is, is not the best to the predicament that we are facing. So mm -hmm. it's the door was open for us to be able to go in and, and preach the word. Right. So there are many, many volunteers that go in and it, it's, a, it's really, it's a great class. And yeah. uh, we have people from different, it's non-denominational. So we have people from different denominations and we all, the volunteers that go in, that's just what they do is they volunteer their time, right. their effort, cause they love and want to give back to the people who are yes. locked up. You know, so many people throw them away and so many people say, you deserve that, you do that. And so that's what you deserve. That is, you know, your lot in life. But I don't believe that's the gospel of grace. No, nope, So God I don't has believe opened the door either. for us to go in and yeah, so it's amazing. So that's how I met Jay. And Artin was also, he was with Jay in the prison. They actually, I think they're bunked together, is that right? We're mm -hmm. in a cell together? Mm. Yeah. We were. So when they came out, Artin came to the church and I met him through that. And he's been coming out to the church. And as you've heard now, his mom comes out and so on. And uh, they, remember we spoke last time about the healing rooms on a Monday. Artin yes. and his mom, they've come, they've joined the healing room oh, team. Oh, don't you love that? Yes. So they pray for people. Jay is there every Monday. So they're really, really involved in the life of the church, not mm -hmm. just going on a Sunday, warming a pew and then going home. Mm -hmm. This is really seeking after God and bringing his kingdom. As Jesus so told us to pray, you know, as it is in heaven here on earth. So what you are doing is discipling and enabling them to grow in the Word and find God's will for their lives. Not only that, but to use what they have read in the Scripture. And I think we lose it when we don't have a chance to use it. Definitely, yeah. You have that saying, use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. revelation that we get. So many people are asking God for more, more. I want more revelation. Show me more. Give me more but we're not using the revelation that we have. But that, I think that's the reason they're asking for more. They're wanting more understanding, and they're saying they want more revelation, but you're doing actually what it is that they desire. Yeah, I think when they say more, if, if God gives you a revelation and He says, you know, this is the plan that I have for you, this is the vision that I have, this is why you were created, and then many, many times we say, well, that's too big, that's too great, I don't have enough money, I don't have the people to support me. Mm -hmm. Lord, show me more, give me more. And, and God says, until you use what I've given you, I can't give you the next step. And so that's where we come in by showing them how to use what the Lord yes, has said. Yes, exactly, because the Bible says, you know, faith without works is dead. Dead. So you can have all the CDs, all the DVDs of every preacher and his brother and listen <laughs> to every one of them and quote the word. But if you don't go out and use that faith, 
it says your faith is dead. It doesn't doesn't do any good. I was reading something yesterday by uh, Andrew Womack. He has I just received his book mm. on um, the new you and the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's really good, yeah. and I had got it because well, in order two of them, I wanted to give them to some people, but I like to read what's in them before yeah. I give them. And anyway, what he was saying was the fact that uh, all, just exactly what you're saying here, people don't know how to use it. And he was using himself as an example of how he didn't know from anything. And if someone had just taken time to tell him, mm. you know, he was into the word, but he was limited in his understanding. Mm. But anyway, this this is one man that's good. He's a good teacher, just like rightfully is. Yeah, so that's what God has done. He's basically opened that door for us to be able to go in and, you know, I mean, these two men have amazing testimonies. Uh, I myself have an amazing testimony of the grace Which of God, nothing else. Which you have never given, because <laughs> we've never gotten there yet, yeah, have we, right? I mean, you know, if you're watching this program, you're looking at three people that have really, really, really messed up. <laughs> you're looking at three people that have made such a mess of life. Okay. But you're also looking at three people that have just received the grace of God. And God has taken us out of the mire, out of the pig's pen. Yes. And as the word says, he's placed our feet on a rock. And they are blessing anyone that comes around them. And I assure <laughs> you of that. So um, do you want me to start asking for their stories first? Do you want to start off? Um, let you, uh, I've been on the program, so let's give them a turn. They're sitting here. They're all ready to go. They're like horses in the, in the <laughs> right. just ready, chomping at the bit as they say. Yeah, so okay, you, you lead it on. Yeah, so we'll just, just give your testimony, guys. Just You obviously won't be able to give the oh, whole because, mm -hmm. yeah, but just what, what did you do? You know, if you want to, I mean, it's not, yeah, but yeah. just what the Lord has done. You know, this is not about what we, it's, it's what yeah. God has done for all of us, and mm -hmm. we just give Him the glory. So. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Um, <laughs> I pretty much, you know, I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. Um, my mom, you know, she had struggled with certain addictions. My father was never there. So I grew up in the street, and I lived a very um, violent and dangerous lifestyle. And, you know, in doing that, that led me to eight years in prison. And with my, with him up with technically seven years and three months, but we say eight. And within that time, you know, I got born again, accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I really just started seeking God. And as I started to seek God, He started placing certain people in my life. Let me stop you. How did you find Him in jail? I just started reading the Bible and people kept telling me about Jesus and the but words started people sticking. People that were telling you where, did you, where did you run into them? Were they already in jail? Some of them was already in jail. Some of them were people that came into the prison or came into the jail. And over the process of time of hearing the word and hearing the word, just one day it was like, like life just, I believed it and things were different. And then from there, I just started all I wanted to do was read the Bible. So the Holy Spirit got a hook in you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. It's all we need to do is to allow him time to get a hook in you, and he can draw you right on. And, you know, I, I went to another prison. That's where I met Artem and a guy named Greg Hatmeyer who, you know, really sold and poured certain things that the Lord has given them unto us. <laughs> We got baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, the yeah. evidence that comes with it. And after that, it was on to the races. After that, it was there's no there's no looking back, no, uh -huh. no turning back, you That's know. Right. And, and as I started getting in the Word, the Lord started teaching me things. He started teaching me certain things in the Word, and I would go and I would teach other people, and I would uh -huh. see those things work in their life, and I was just like, you know, I'm just, I'm just blessed. So make a long story short, I went to Deep Meadows, got in the faith-based reentry program, and in the midst of that, you know, rifle it came in, and you know, I just started, you know, just telling them like, you know, man, I, you know, I want to come to your church, you know, uh -huh. I want the Lord to, you know, I just want to be 
and do what the will of the Lord he is. More. Yeah, and I believe that, you know, the Lord had provided him for my life. Like, I remember the first time I met him, in my spirit, I could just sense, like, it's something very significant about this guy. Uh, it is, though. Yeah, it is. I wonder who it is. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's Jesus on inside of me. <laughs> and, you know, I, was, I had my own plans. I was going to go to Atlanta and, you know, I'm, you know, just go for what I know, live with my sister, get a job with her husband, and, you know, try to, you know, just get involved with the church. Uh -huh. And I had a church that was going to involve with me in ministry, but the Lord had shut it down. Okay. And i never forget after I got the bad news. I had told our Tim, and then when I'm on my way to the, to, to my um, bump, Rifle, he's coming in to do... Um, He's coming in to mentor people that's about to get out the faith base, but he's not necessarily coming to see the faith base group. He would teach on one day, and then another day, him and another gentleman would come in, and they would do, you know, the mentors for those that was about to come out. And at this time, it, I was about to come out, but it wasn't really time for me to go through mentorship. And I seen him in the class, and I was like, man, I'm just going to go and tell him. So I went and told him, and... We worship the Lord. I'll never forget. I picked the worship CD in, and we just worship. We praise the Lord. And he gave me a scripture from Acts when, you know, they were going against the disciples. And one of the guys who knew the law, he came. I want to say, was it Gimeo? I don't go there now. And this was the this was the really the word, the beginning. The really this was really the beginning word that really is still functioning in my life yeah. as we speak. Yeah, he was the advice he gave that people wanted to, they came against the disciples and they wanted to stop them and they wanted to kill them, you know, what the Lord had done, they didn't want to, hear it. to continue. So they said, you know, let's beat them, kill them, throw them into prison. Then uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 37 says, After this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. Mm -hmm. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, <laughs> right. lest you even found yourself to fight against God. Fight against yeah. God. So that's that's just the verse I had for Jay when he came. He said, man, my, my whole plan to go home is, <laughs> it's fallen down. I can't go, you know, things are so bad. And I don't, and I said, man, God has a plan. Yeah. Yeah. So if this plan is not of God, let it be. If it is of God, it yeah. cannot be And you be didn't stopped. know he had a plan I for didn't you. Know th I didn't know this was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely didn't know this was. And I think maybe two weeks later, you know, it was presented to me, and it was like, you know, um, Pastor's Rifle Church, you know, they got together, they, you know, got your apartment, they furnished it, they paid the bills for you're up to a year. You're going to have to speak up because you're uh -huh. telling some good stuff, yeah. and it's slipping right on by. Okay, okay, I'm, you, I'm a, all right. I um, want to hear it. I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're talking so, to me now. <laughs> so, so, like two weeks after I had received that word, I guess, you know, the Lord, I guess, was on the hearts of the leaders that was at Harvest. And he says, you know, look, this has, you know, been presented to me. He was like, look, you know, the church, you know, we got some people, you know, that's in the church. We got your apartment. They furnished it. They paid the bills up to a year. All you have to do is come out and serve the Lord. That's all you have to do is come out and serve the Lord. Now, I the church told you this, that yes. they had gotten you an apartment. Well, this rifle had told me this, but this is, you know, I guess... It came what, from the church. Came from came from the church, through the church. Now, they got you an apartment, yeah. and it was paid for for a year. Furnished. Furnished. Now, what else? Paid for, furnished for a year, and all I had to do was serve the Lord. All I had to do was come, come home, live in the apartment, and just be a part of the church, and function in the church or whatever it is that the Lord wills for me to do. Commit and I, your life. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to do anyway. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, let's, where, where do I sign the papers at, you know? <laughs> and um, from there, you know, I come out and I get blessed with a job at Ford Motors. I get a car was sewn into my life. A scooter was sewn into my life. What? 
Yeah, like I'm talking about like within four months time, you know, I've received apartment, bills paid for a year, a long term job, ministry, consistent a transportation. A car and a scooter. A car and a scooter. Um with the car first, I couldn't drive it, so I sold the car. And from, from the car came the scooter, you know, until I get my license. And, you know, just <laughs> blessing after blessing, you know, just more. I mean, I went back home, and the situation that led me to prison was that I physically hurt a man real bad. Mm -hmm. And I was really believing for the Lord to, you know, touch his heart and, you know, place forgiveness. And, you know, he did that. Like, I seen the guy... He forgave me, mm -hmm. and he blessed me. He blessed me. He was like, man, you just came home here. He gave me some money, bought me some clothes. I'm talking about this is the guy that I tried to harm who, you know, in the in darkness wanted to harm me. And the Lord, you know, he turned up the heart of the king whatsoever way he wills. And, you know, that was reconciled. Um, I've been able to have my daughter with me. And just, you know, allow her to hang out with me and see the things of God and that God is doing in my life. I was able to go and give a teaching on the righteousness of God at this um, group called Needle's Eye, which is in Short Pump. It's a ministry called Needle's Eye. Yeah. Lisa. I know. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was able to come to her house and, you know, give my testimony and just teach on that righteousness, you know, the consistency of God. That's what makes him righteous and right and everything he does is that he's always right. He's always consistent. He never changes. And once I really got the revelation and, you know, just started walking it out, it's just, it's, it's amazing. The <laughs> Lord is so amazing. Too. He's it's, amazing. It's amazing me to hear what all he did for you in such a short, short time. time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you talk about a real turnaround, but that is a turnaround. So anyhow, um, I, 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 what I'm trying to, in, okay, I know apartment and it's paid for for a year. Your bills are paid for and um, you get a car and you get a scooter. Mm, and a job with Ford Motors. And a job with Ford Motors. Can you imagine all this? Ephesians talks about, you know, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly beyond, beyond, you know, what we can ask or think. I think that, that's God. He didn't even know enough to ask for. Yeah, so. <laughs> but he got it. Yeah. Wow. That's just a little bit. I mean, there's so many more things to the <laughs> testimony, but we only have two hours. Yeah. So we really can't. <laughs> we've got to give Artem a chance as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but we can do it all. You know, come back another time do, and, yeah. and still do more. Yeah. But right now we are running out of time and rightful. We have, I didn't call you Joel. Hmm. <laughs> we have five minutes. Would you please ask a blessing for those who are watching the program sure. and invite them to accept the Lord? And then we'll go on to another one. Sure. You know, if you're watching this program and you think, oh, well, it's easy for you, Jay. It's easy for you, Rifle. Easy for you, Artem. God will do that for you, but not for me. The Bible says God is no respect of persons. So what he will do for one person, he'll do for another as well. He loves us all, no matter what you've heard, no matter what people have told you about God. Read the word, you know, see the life of Jesus, how he came to lay down his life for us. So the life that we are all living now by the grace of God, that's available to you. And God wants you to have a good life. That's his will. That's just the goodness of God. That He didn't plan a a broke, busted, disgusted life for you. You're not his perfect will here on earth for him to just leave you alone and say, well, fend for yourself. So we're just going to pray a prayer where you are. You sit there, just close your eyes and just let, let's pray together. Let's go to the Lord in, in prayer. Father, we, we thank you for this time that we can hear testimony, Lord. And the word testimony means do it again. So we just thank you, Lord, that you are able to do what you have done for, for us you are able to do it, Lord, for every person who's watching this broadcast, who comes to you in sincerity with an earnest heart saying, Lord, I need to change. I need your help to change. I can't do it by myself. Because each and every one of us realize that when we were living life our way, when we had the reins, when we were in control, things didn't work out. But thank you for your grace that never ends. Your word says that your mercies are new every morning. So if you're watching this program, just say to him where you are, Lord Jesus, just 
come into my life. Help me, Lord. I know and I recognize that I need a Savior, and there is no other but you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for coming to die on a cross, to bleed for my sins, to be broken, Lord, for my iniquities. Thank you for your goodness. And I place my trust in you. I lay down my life to become your child, to serve you, to do the things that you have planned for me, because that's the only way I will have, Lord, the goodness of life that you have intended for me. We ask this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we come by faith because we know that you're a good God and you keep your word. So we ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You're very welcome. God is good and everyone needs to know that. Everyone needs to know it. You need to practice it and you need to attempt to do what <clears throat> you heard Jay say. And we're going to go on and get, um, is it Artemis? Artem. <laughs> Artem. And not an M-U-S at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get there eventually. Let's try it one more time at the next, <laughs> next go around. I am delighted that you all have been able to come today. Thank you so much. And I like your testimony. We're going to dig into that some more, but we're going to get Tim's message next. And then we'll have Joel or Rifle come up at the end. Oh, the Holy Spirit, I really don't understand. You must be a lot like Joel, where he's I have concerned. No idea, but praise <laughs> God, the same Holy Spirit that he prophesied about is the Holy Spirit working in and through me. So there's definitely something there. Definitely <laughs> something yeah. because it's, praise God. it's been a long time that I've mm. been <laughs> struggling with calling yeah. you Joel. Mm. But we want you to know what is going on, and I want you to understand that Rifle is going to be helping with this program, and we are excited about what is coming forth. And we just bless you and ask that you receive the Lord so that you can enjoy some of the blessings that He is bestowing upon the rest of us simply by knowing Him. We love you and see you next week. <laughs>